what a uh, just what a great game! I mean, congratulations to Texas A&M uh, for them to play the way they did under the circumstances with an interim coach and all the transition. They, they played a great game. And, uh, you know, it was two really good offenses and a lot of skill on the field, and it came down to one play, and we were fortunate to make that play. So it's uh, it's been a, a magical week for us. Um, I want to thank Will Webb and the entire Belt Bowl committee. They they really put on a, a first class week. Our kids just love the entire week, the activities, the meals. It's a uh, it's a, really been a special week that our kids will never forget, and no better way to cap it off. I, finding a way to win the game and becoming belt bowl champions. Not only are you guys belt bowl champions, you also hold the record now. Right, was 51 points coming into today, Mississippi State, and now it's 55 points from you guys. Did you know that this would be the offensive shootout that it was? I thought it would be. I, I thought it would be a high scoring game. And I told our offensive coordinator before the game, I said, go fast. I don't know how much it's going to take. Don't take, I told Ryan Anderson, you're the gas pedal, baby. Keep your foot on the gas. And you know this game was gonna come down to whoever could outscore somebody. And then the other big thing that happened were turnovers. And unfortunately, I, I believe we won the turnover battle three to two, um, but the turnovers were huge. I mean, it's typical bowl game, um, just like openers. You know, some <clears throat> ugly special teams, some good special teams, turnovers. You know, when you don't play for a month, it, it always is that little bit of a filling out process until you get into a rhythm. And and then we got into a rhythm. And scored 31 unanswered, and then they got in the rhythm and scored a bunch of points. And uh, you know, it really at the end of the game, it became hard to manage the game because we, we play much better when we go fast. And yet, I did not want to give them much time to score. And I just figured I'd, I'd take my chance and play fast and make sure we got the points and hope that we could make one play on defense. And, and we were fortunate we did. I mean, if they hit that one post route, you know, it's, we got a bunch of uh, people wearing red really happy and a bunch of people in gold and black in depression. So it's a, a you know, it's a play by play game and, and we were fortunate to make one or two more plays at the end. And we've done that a lot this year. You know, you look at the App, uh, Appalachian State game and the North Carolina State game. Um, and now this game, you know, it came down to a play or two at the end. and. Um, we're fortunate, a little bit lucky, but I also think we're pretty good. You know, if you look at uh, our year, we beat, of our eight wins, we beat six bowl teams. And so we did not get to eight wins by playing an easy schedule. We beat some legitimately good football teams this year, and we're, uh, we're really proud of our guys. And, you know, you guys are all in the media. How many people do you ever interview like John Wolford? You know, we got some really special kids here, and John's one of them, and we got a lot of seniors that are like that. So. Why it's it's, uh, it's why it's great to coach at Wake Forest. You get to coach kids like that. For all the points that got scored, how big was it for your defense on on third and goal from inside the one to hold them keep oh. them to, to to a field goal? There? Yeah, I mean it became a. I mean that's the game. If they if they score a touchdown there, then I'm having to decide at the end whether I go for one or two. So I mean, our defense got us. Uh, it was got us got a big stop. And then at the end with the two minute drive, I mean, you know, how many people here thought we were gonna go four and out on that one? Or whatever it was, four and out, six and out. So it was, um, again, just had to make a play and fortunately we did. Coach asked you the other day about sending John out with a win and I mean, can you imagine a better scenario than how this story No, I mean, you know, write the movie script. If, uh, <laughs> if you write it, as soon as he walked out the door, there's a, uh, a girl that falls in love with him, he gets married, and lives happily ever after. I mean, that's storybook. It's storybook ending. You can't make this stuff up. Um, and that kid deserves every single accolade and bit of success that he's experienced. Because you know, two years ago there weren't a lot of big John Wolford fans. You know, and and now for him to go out that way and ignore the critics and to believe in himself is. Uh, is really a testament to his character and the type of person he is. Coach, when you saw that last pass attempt from a and hit the ground on fourth down, what was, what's going through your head in that moment? What was the emotion like for you right then? You know, just just thankful. You know, it's, when I saw that post go over our head the play before, 
you know, you just, it's that sinking feeling in your stomach that, you know, you just need to make a play. Can you make a play? And, and we did, and, you know, he overthrew the one ball. But, uh, you know, it's, when these games are over, I'm emotionally spent. You know, my wife will tell you that. I'm, I'm not a lot of fun after games, win or lose. <laughs> just because all the emotional energy that goes into it and just all the anxiety and the highs and lows of the game. And, you know, when it works out your way, you're thankful. And when it doesn't, you're depressed. So that's uh, the life of a coach. You, you live week to week and game to game. I know it probably felt like yesterday, but did you have to say anything after you got down 14 nothing and they had blocked two punts? Just keep playing, keep playing, keep playing. Last year in the bowl game, one play, we're down 7 nothing. You know, and, and that's where we're different now than we've ever been is we now have an offense that can overcome that you know and, and we got too many playmakers I mean at some point we're going to make plays and get on a roll and for us it's just making that first first down it almost seems like in a drive if we can make a first down we're good if we don't obviously it's three and out but if we can make that first first down it gets us rolling and gets us moving and um, we, we finally got on rhythm and you know Scotty Washington made some huge plays uh, Cam Serene you know, is now the ACC's all-time leader in receptions, yards, and touchdowns. Uh, what a great career he's had. Um, and, uh, you know, John made plays with his feet. And Matt Colburn had some big runs, and then he got hurt, and Cade Carney goes in there and scores. And, you know, we've never had depth like this. You know, the ball, we don't care where the ball goes. We've got three tailbacks we feel good about. We have a tight end. We have four or five receivers. And... Um, you know, we've got big shoes to fill with John graduating, Kim graduating, but we've got nine of those guys back. And uh, I, I told the team afterwards that, you know, last year the bar got raised to seven, this year it got raised to eight, and we want to take that next step. And we've got to embrace that challenge, knowing that there's not one easy part of it. It's, it's really, really hard. In our division, in the ACC, in the Atlantic, it's hard to get the six, seven wins. It's hard to get to a bowl. And now to take that next step is a really tough step because we're going to have to keep winning games against good teams. Uh, I think there's a confidence now that we have that we haven't had in the past. Do the seniors have a good sense of the foundation that they've laid here? I think they're extremely proud of it. You know, it's, uh, I think there's two different types of, of people that go through a program. I think there's the type that is essentially selfish that when they leave, they kind of hope the team does worse because they're no longer there. But then you have kids that truly buy into the program and take pride in what they built. And again, we're fortunate at Wake Forest that, you know, you can imagine what do you think John Wolford's like? And what do you think Cam Serenay's like? And what do you think Elite Carey's like? And what do you think Grant Dawson's like? Those guys take an extreme amount of pride that where this program was when they got here and where it is now. And they constantly tell the younger players it's your job to carry this on and raise the bar again. And, uh, you know, I think it's great in a game like this that we've got former players on the sidelines. You know, that, that's, what, that's what good programs do. You know, the players want to come back and they want to re-engage. And the reason they do is because they have great memories of playing here. And, and the senior class, you know, has had a great experience. And, and they'll be really involved. And, and hopefully, uh, if we're fortunate enough to get back to a bowl next year, that these kids will want to come back and be on the sidelines and feel that they're responsible for, for us being there again. But, I know you guys gave them a lot to cheer about today, but it seemed like the Wake Forest side of the crowd was pretty engaged on that last defensive drive. What did you think of the crowd today? It's two, it's two years in a row. So you know, our, the goal is to, well, I can't imagine we didn't win the tailgate today, right? <laughs> so that's, you know, you got to win the game one, you want to win the tailgate two. And I just, uh, you know, there's certain things as, uh, as a coach and a program and the players that when we, well, it was last year in the military, but when we first came out and we saw the whole one thing of black and gold, and then today it was even better. I mean, it was just, you came out in the whole lower section, there's people in the upper section, and it's like, how cool is this that, you know, not only are we in a bowl game against a team like Texas A&M, look how many Wake Forest fans, and I'm going to say what I said last year, where are all you people at every home game? You know, just don't come to our bowl games. We play Florida State and Louisville. We, you know, good programs get that type of crowd for every home game. And uh, I always felt that, you know, we should get support when we had a program, when we played at a level that was worth supporting. Um, and we had three games this year at home that we sold out. And then, what, 
well, probably at least 30,000. Do we have 25, 30,000 vegan fans there today? Yeah, we say at least 25. Okay, well, let's round it up and say 30, 35. Okay. We'll make it sound good so that you'll want to invite us back again in a couple of years. You mentioned Kate Carney, kid who played his high school ball at Davidson Day. For him to score that touchdown, given what he's been through battling injuries all season, how special was it to see him reach the end zone in front of hometown fans? You know what? I, I don't get into who does it. I mean, I love Kate, I love Matt Colburn, I love our Keem Bird, I don't care. Any three of those guys. So I'm happy for Kate, I would have been happy for Matt, I would have been happy for our Keem. And again, I think that's the culture of our program is the kids play for each other. So, you know, I don't think Kate's thinking, geez, I'm great, it's great I scored. I think he thinks, hey, it's great I helped our team win. And, uh, and we do, we have a, a bunch of, you know, a bunch of unselfish guys that, you know, Cortez Lewis running down on kickoff and uh, Pat Osterhage on punt. You know, those guys never tap out and say, hey, not this rep. You're going to have to cut this off, man. I'll go forever okay. on these press <laughs> Keep going. These are good ones. Can you talk a little bit? It was a physical game despite the, the numbers of offense and a lot of injuries, guys coming in and out. You really got to test your depth, especially in, in the secondary and, and at receiver throughout the game. It kind of showed the growth of your program. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm looking down, but yeah. I was looking to kind of answer your question that, you know, that was like a game and a half. You know, one team runs 94 plays, the other team runs 97 plays. You better have depth. And I think this is another sign of where we've come because you know, two years ago and three years ago, how many times were we in games against good teams and then got maybe blown out in the second half or pulled away because we didn't have the depth? And now we can roll three running backs in there and we can roll uh, a bunch of receivers and we can roll, you know, eight defensive linemen. So. Um, that's what good programs have. They have depth. And we're not where we need to be across the board in that area, but we're a lot closer than we've been. And hopefully with the recruiting class coming in, we'll, we'll take another, another step toward that next year. It reminds me, with about eight or nine minutes to go on defense, it seemed like you subbed out your entire defensive line, had all second string out there. We Was there a reason for that? We do that. We've done that all year, Les. Like it, it, when, within a drive, as soon as one group plays five plays, the first dead ball opportunity, it's just we do – and sometimes you don't notice it because maybe we're in and out of packages, but we feel good playing eight defensive linemen. And, you know, two years ago, three years ago, we never would have taken Josh Banks off the field or never would have taken Duke Edgefor off the field. You know, Boogie Bashi made a huge play on third down to get us off the field. You know, so now Duke graduates, Boogie's got to step up, and now we got to find the next guy that we can sub with. You know, again, that's what Clemson does and Florida State does and NC State and you know, the good programs in our conference have the ability to do that, and we finally are there. And that takes time. That takes that takes time. Uh, you know, you, you're not going to get there in one or two recruiting classes. There are some critics that say maybe there are too many bowl games, but then you look and you see the the level of competition today, and the emotion over the win. Uh, what would you say to those folks? Yeah, go in that locker room and, and tell our players there's too many bowl games, and it, and it's all of it. It's like man, what. You know, it's not just the game, it's, you know, this is, it's college football. It's an experience for these kids. So they come down to Charlotte and they go to Charlotte Motor Speedway and they go to the NASCAR Hall of Fame and they get to go shopping at Bell. And it's the only time of the year that the team can really enjoy each other and enjoy those relationships and those bonds if they don't have class. And it, it's not just about the game. And the game, again, was a great game and went down to the wire. Our players remember the whole experience. And, uh, you know, anybody that says there's too many bowl games, I guarantee it didn't play college football or doesn't coach it. You know, tell, you know, and, and I'm sure the ratings today were good. That was a great football game. And don't tell me that Texas A&M and Wake Forest didn't really, really care. That was good football that was played today. That was a high-level game on, in every way. So um, it's not the NFL. These guys aren't professionals. Part of it is the student-athlete experience and the bowl experience. And, uh, and it was an incredible bowl experience. And again, that's a credit to Will and his staff and, and everybody here that's connected with the belt bowl. This, was, this, this bowl is run first class in every way. So our players had a great week that they'll remember the rest of their life. And they're going to get rings. So, What does the 24-hour rule become when you're in the bowl game? Tell players they can enjoy it one week. <laughs> 
kids and when they're home or the, you know, the seniors, they can enjoy it the rest of their life. What, what they do now is their business. <laughs> you know, the, uh, those guys can decide whether they want to work out or get fat or, you know, eat lean or eat fried foods. That's all their call. Well, John Wolford just bought a Fitbit. Uh, so, I mean, you know. <laughs> Somehow, I think John will get his steps every day. That's what I'm figuring. <laughs> but for the rest of the players, you know, again, you don't raise the bar by standing still. So I told those guys, enjoy it for a week. And in a week, they better get in the weight room and they better start running because, you know, the next step isn't just going to happen. And, uh, you know, it's always protect the team. But I'll let them, whatever, whatever. I'll give them seven days on this one. And I'm excited. I really am. I'm excited. You know, we get that group back on the 15th, 16th. And we'll have a team meeting and we'll start setting the goals for next year. And I'm excited about that meeting. I'm really looking forward. And that's the great thing about college football. You know, guys don't sign 10-year contracts. You don't have a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning for 15 years. Every year it's new players, a new challenge, new dynamics. And that's what makes it fun. And, uh, and we're going to enjoy this one. And, and we look forward to the challenge of, of getting after 2018. Do you get a little downtime? I mean... You have that early signing class in, which is the bulk of your class probably, a dead period. And I'll take our, my family and I will go away for about two or three days. And, you know, when we get away on trips like this, I promise not to look at my cell phone too much. <laughs> and then after 72 hours, I'll start getting restless and watch 19 recruiting film and watch cut-ups of this year. And, you know, it's, again, you, uh, this is an awesome feeling, and we're going to enjoy this one. But, you know, after three or four days, Hey, let's go. It's, it's, let's get ready for the next year, and and that's fun. That's a, it's a great challenge, and I'm looking forward to some of the younger guys developing, and let's see what Sage Surratt can do next year, and some other guys that we redshirted. But this is one for the ages. This is one we'll never ever forget, and uh, we're sending that big Waterford trophy back to uh, Ireland and getting it uh, inscripted with Wake Forest University, and that will go in our trophy case and. Will be uh, right next to the military bowl from last year. Any further questions? Okay. All right. Thanks all.